Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play The Lost Ruins of Arnak, designed by Min and Elwyn and published by Czech Games Edition, who sponsored this video. In Lost Ruins of Arnak, you and up to three other players will lead an expedition to explore an uninhabited island in uncharted seas, where explorers have found traces of a great civilization. You will equip your expedition with useful items, search the jungle for mysterious artifacts, discover new sites, and overcome the Guardians. Most importantly, you will piece together the fragments of Arnak's history by doing research that could lead to the discovery of the Lost Temple. In this video, I'll be covering the rules for the 2-4 player game. If you want to learn how the solo game works, I have another video for that, which you can find by clicking on the little eye in the corner. Place the game board in the middle of the play area. For your first game, use this side of the board with the Bird Temple. I'll explain the other side of the board at the end of the video. Take the cards and separate them out into artifacts, items, fear cards, and the cards for each of the players. Shuffle the artifacts and place them face down in the corner of the board. Reveal the top card and place it here. Shuffle the items and place them face down in the other corner of the board. Then reveal the top five cards and place them in a row here. Place the moon stuff in the first position between the artifacts and the items. Place the fear cards in a deck here. These are all the same, so there's no need to shuffle them, and you can place them face up. Take the idols and mix them thoroughly. On each of the eight level one sites, place an idol at random face up. And on each of the four level two sites, place one idol at random face up and another one face down. If playing with fewer than four players, block off some of the base camp spaces as follows. In a two player game, simply block off each of the spaces depicting two boots. In a three player game, shuffle the blocking tiles and choose three of them at random. Place each of the chosen tiles on the matching space and then return the other two to the box. At the top of the research track, place a number of temple tiles equal to the number of players in each stack. So in a three player game, there are three 11 point tiles, six six point tiles in two stacks, and nine three point tiles in three stacks. Shuffle the research bonus tiles and place one face up on each of the bonus tile spaces on the research track, based on the number of players in the game. Spaces marked like this are only used when playing with three or four players, and spaces marked like this are only used in a four-player game. From the remaining tiles, make a stack of face-down tiles at the top of the temple. Use a number of tiles equal to the number of players, and then return the rest of the tiles to the box. Place the supply board below the game board. On it, place all of the gold, the compasses, the tablets, the arrowheads, and the jewels. Shuffle the level one site tiles and place them face down here, and do the same with the level two site tiles. Shuffle the Guardian tiles and place them face down here. Turn all of the Assistant tiles silver side up and shuffle them into three random stacks of four tiles each, placing them on the indicated spaces here. Each player chooses a colour and takes a player board, two archaeologists, the research tokens and four starting cards in that colour. Also give each player a player aid. Place your research tokens at the bottom of the research track with your magnifying glass on top of your book. Take your four starting cards and add to them two fear cards. Shuffle them and place them face down on the left side of your player board. Then draw the top five cards from your deck and put them into your hand. The starting player is the one who most recently visited a place they have never visited before. Give this player the starting player marker. That player starts the game with two gold. The next player clockwise starts with one gold and one compass. Player three starts with two gold and a compass. And player four starts with one gold and two compasses. That's the end of the setup, so now on with the rules. The game lasts for five rounds, which is tracked with the moon staff. Beginning with the start player and going clockwise, players continue to take turns until all players have passed. On your turn, you must perform one main action and may also perform any number of free actions. The various actions are dig at an existing site by placing one of your archaeologists there and getting the benefit of the space, Discovering a new site by spending compasses and taking the idol, along with gaining the benefit of the new site, but also revealing a guardian. Overcoming a guardian by spending the resources printed on it. Buying a card, either an item with gold or an artifact with compasses. Playing a card and resolving its effect. Researching by spending the resources shown to advance one of your tokens up the research track, gaining various benefits and possibly including an assistant. The free actions include anything with the lightning bolt symbol, which could be cards from your hand or assistants that you have recruited. One of the main actions you can do is to pass, which means the round is over for you. And when all players have passed, the round comes to an end. 
At that point, players set up for the next round, which includes taking all of the cards that they played in that round, shuffling them, and placing them at the bottom of their deck. Unlike many other deck building games, the cycling of cards only happens at the end of the round, not when your deck runs out. And you do not refill your hand to five cards at the end of your turn. That only happens at the end of the round. The objective in the game is to score points, represented by a number inside a purple icon. The points are added up at the end of the game using the score pad provided. At the start of the game, your deck consists of six cards. Two funding cards, two exploration cards, and two fear cards. Playing a funding card on your turn is a free action that gains you one gold. You put the card face up in front of you into your play area. Similarly, playing the exploration card is also a free action that gains you one compass. But these cards have another use too, which is their travel icon in the top left corner. Various actions in the game, such as digging at a site, requires travel icons, and you can generate them by playing cards from your hand. Also note the hierarchy of travel icons on your player aid. A jeep or ship can always be used as if it was a boot, and a plane can be used as any travel icon. And also note that if you want to, you can always hire a pilot for two gold, gaining you one plane travel icon that you must use immediately. And you can hire two pilots if you need to travel to a location such as this. To dig here, for example, requires you to play one card with a boot icon on it. When you play a card for its travel icon, the rest of the card is ignored. Essentially, every card has two uses. You can either play it for its main effect, or you can use it for the traveler icons in the top left. And if you take a look at the fear cards, although these cards aren't great, and they're actually worth minus one point at the end of the game, you can still play them for their boot icon, so they're not completely useless. I'll now explain each of the actions one by one. The first action I'll explain is digging at a site. To do this, you must place one of your available archaeologists onto an empty space on the board. At the start of the game, only the five base camp sites can be dug at, but later in the game, as other sites get discovered, you can use this action to dig at those sites too. You cannot dig at a site that has not yet been discovered. And there must also be an empty space available that isn't blocked by another archaeologist or a blocking tile. To place an archaeologist on a space, you must pay the travel cost indicated on the space. Then you resolve the effect of the site indicated here. These icons are all explained in the rulebook, but I will cover the five base camp sites now. Here you gain two gold. Here you gain two compasses. And here you gain two tablets. Here you gain one arrowhead. And here you must put one of your cards from your hand into your play area, ignoring the card's effect, to gain one jewel. There are eight level one sites and four level two sites waiting to be discovered during the game. The rewards are great, but the sites are protected by dangerous guardians. To discover a level one site, in addition to the travel icon depicted, you must pay three compasses. This represents the time spent exploring. To discover a level two site, the cost increases to six compasses. After paying the compasses and the travel icon, place your archeologist on the space and take the idol or idols from the site. If you gain a face-up idol, immediately gain the bonus printed on it and then flip the idol face down. If you gain a face-down idol, simply place it on your player board. Idols are worth three points at the end of the game, but there is another use for them that I will explain later. Then take the top tile from the appropriate stack and place it face-up on the site. You then immediately gain the benefit of that site. Here for example, this is a very scary place and you gain a fear card, but you also gain a tablet and a jewel. But then the Guardian awakens. Take the top Guardian tile and place it on the site. The Guardian has no immediate effect, but if you do not manage to overcome the Guardian, then when you return the Archaeologist back to your supply at the end of the round, you will gain a Fear card. I'll explain this more later on. Overcoming a Guardian is another action that I will explain in the next chapter. As mentioned in the previous chapter, once a site has been discovered, it can be dug at if the space is empty, such as in a later round. In this case, you only need to pay the travel icon, not the compasses again. That was only used for discovering the site in the first place. And you can dig at a site that contains a guardian, but you will gain a fear card at the end of the round if the guardian is still there. As just mentioned, whenever you discover a site, you awaken the guardian. Guardians remain on the board until they are overcome, which is done by paying the cost printed on the guardian tile and then you remove the Guardian from the board and place it near your player board. Each Guardian you overcome is worth 5 points at the end of the game, but there's another benefit to overcoming them too. 
Each Guardian has a boon printed in the top right, and once during the game you can use this boon by flipping the Guardian face down. It is still worth 5 points at the end of the game. Some boons are travel icons that you can use whenever you need to. Others are free actions which you can use at any time on your turn. This one, for example, allows you to draw a card from your deck. The card row is divided into two parts by the moon staff. Everything to the left of the staff is an artifact, and everything to the right of the staff is an item. As the game moves on, and the staff moves to the right, there will be more artifacts and fewer items available. Items are useful pieces of equipment that you can buy by spending the gold indicated in the bottom left of the card. Once you have paid the cost, take the item card and place it on the bottom of your deck. Then, slide the remaining items down to fill any gaps, and draw a new one to refill the row. Artifacts are valuable treasures that you can find while exploring the island. They are gained by spending the number of compasses shown on the card. Thematically, you're not buying the artifact. The cost in compasses represents your expedition is spending time searching for it. Unlike items though, you do not place the card on the bottom of your deck. Instead, you put it into your play area and immediately resolve its effect. I'll explain what this tablet icon is in the next chapter. And again, slide any other artifact along and then refill from the deck. Note that any new cards you buy are worth points at the end of the game. Playing a card is very simple. You just put the card into your play area and resolve its effect. Remember that if the effect contains the lightning bolt icon, playing it is a free action and not a main action. All of the icons on the cards are described on the back page of the rulebook. So, what about that tablet icon on artifact cards? Well, remember that when you first gained the artifact, you resolve its effect. But later in the game, when that artifact is in your hand, to play it from your hand, you must spend one tablet to be able to resolve its effect. The research action allows you to advance one of your tokens up the research track. First, choose which of your tokens you wish to move. You can move either token, but your notebook can never advance further than your magnifying glass. Thematically, the magnifying glass represents that you're discovering something, and then the notebook represents you writing it down. After choosing which token to move, choose a space to advance to that is connected to your current space. Sometimes there's only one choice, but often you have more than one path. And multiple tokens can share the same space, and your notebook does not have to follow the same path as your magnifying glass. Then, Pay the cost to move to the space, and then move your token. The first player to arrive on a space with a bonus tile gets the benefit of that tile, and then discards it. In addition to the bonus for the first player, all players who move their token to a new row gain the benefit shown on the right. The top effect if you moved your magnifying glass, and the bottom effect if you moved your notebook. Also note the points printed here. These are the points that you will gain at the end of the game if your token ends up on that row. These icons are gaining an assistant, and I'll explain those in a later chapter. When your magnifying glass reaches the top row of the research track, you have discovered the Lost Temple. Unlike the other rows, you get more points if you get there earlier. Place your magnifying glass on the empty space worth the most points. You cannot move your notebook to the temple. After placing your magnifying glass, pick up the stack of bonus tiles, look through them, choose one, resolve the effect, and then discard it from the game. After discovering the Lost Temple, another option is available to you whenever you do the research action. Instead of paying to advance your token, you pay to take a temple tile from any one of the stacks. To gain one of the two-point tiles, you just need to pay the cost printed below the tiles. To gain one of the six-point tiles, you need to pay the combined cost of two adjacent spaces. And to gain an eleven-point tile, you need to pay the cost of all three spaces. Remember that the tiles here are limited based on the number of players. You gain assistance by advancing your notebook up the research track. When your notebook reaches this row, you get your first assistant, and when your notebook reaches this row, you get your second assistant. When you gain an assistant, choose one of the assistants available on the supply board, which is the top tile from any of the stacks. Take the assistant and place it on one of the spaces of your player board, silver side up and vertical. To use an assistant, turn it sideways. It will be refreshed at the end of the round. If the effect is a free action, you can use it immediately or save it until later. Some assistants do not have the lightning bolt. That means that using them is your main action. When you move your notebook to a row with this symbol, flip one of your assistants to the gold side. And if you would use them, you also refresh them. 
you can use it again this round. That assistant has now leveled up and provides a greater benefit. Note that you can always see what the upgraded effect of the assistant is on the silver side, it's shown in the banner here. You gain idols whenever you discover a new site. Each one is worth 3 points at the end of the game, but there is another use for them too. On your turn, you may place an idol in one of the 4 slots at the top of your player board. This is a free action and allows you to gain one of the 5 effects printed just to the side. Using an idol can be very useful to get the thing that you need at just the right time. However, notice that each slot has a number of points printed on it. By using an idol, you are covering up that slot, meaning that you no longer get the points for the slot at the end of the game. One of the effects in the game I think deserves a little bit more explanation is exiling a card. Whenever you see this icon on an effect, you can exile one card from either your hand or your play area from the game. If you exile a fear card, place it back on the fear deck. If you exile one of your starting cards, place it near the fear deck. And if you exile an item or an artifact, place it face up on the corresponding pile on either side of the fear cards. If possible, it's always better to exile a card that you've already played that round. On your turn, as your main action, you can pass. If you do, you can still perform as many free actions as you want to, but then after that, you take no further part in the round. The rest of the players carry on playing as long as they are able to. Once all players have passed, the round is over. If this was round 5, proceed to final scoring, otherwise there are a few steps to perform. First, all players return their archaeologists from the board back to their player board. If you take back an archaeologist from a site with a guardian, you must gain one fear card placed in your play area. Next, if you have any cards left in your hand, you can put them into your play area or save them for the next round. Then, take all cards in your play area, shuffle them and place them face down on the bottom of your deck and then refill your hand back to 5 cards. So, if you have no cards in hand, just draw 5 cards, but if you did keep any cards from the previous round, only draw cards until you now have 5 cards in total. If your deck has fewer cards than you need to draw, just draw what you can. If you have any assistance, refresh them back to their upright position. On the main board, exile both cards on either side of the moon staff, and then move the moon staff to the next space. Slide any remaining artifacts to the right, and then refill the row with new artifacts. Finally, pass the start player marker to the next player clockwise. And now, you're ready to start a new round. At the end of the game, use the score pad provided to record everyone's points. First, look at the positions of the tokens on the research track. The row that each token is in determines how many points it is worth. Here, for example, the blue player was the first to reach the temple and scores 23 points for the magnifying glass, as well as 6 points for their notebook. Temple tiles are recorded next, and blue gained 2 of these, worth a total of 8 points. Next is idols. 3 points for each idol, plus the points for the empty slots. So here, blue scores 16 points. Each guardian you have overcome is worth 5 points, whether or not you use the boon. All of your items and artifacts are worth the points printed on the bottom of them. Here, blue scores 8 points. And you lose 1 point for each fear card you still have. And the player with the most points wins the game. If there is a tie, the tied player who reached the lost temple first is the winner. And if nobody reached the temple, then the player with the highest total score from research wins. For a different experience, you can play the game with the other side of the board, which depicts the Snake Temple and a very dangerous looking volcano. This game is set after the first expedition, which went slightly wrong, and the survivors from that expedition are represented by assistants that you can rescue. Place one assistant per player chosen at random on this space in setup. Only the assistant on the top of the stack should be seen at this time. The supply board gets three stacks of assistants as usual. Two of these stacks will have three assistants, and the third stack will have the remaining ones. Advancing a research token across the bridge costs an idol. This must be one that you have spare and not one that you have placed in any of the slots. Remove the idol from the game. When your magnifying glass reaches this space, you rescue one of the assistants from the track. Look through them, choose one, and place the remaining ones back on the space in the same order. This assistant comes into play exhausted and cannot be used until it is refreshed. 
there is a new type of effect on this research track which causes you to gain a fear card to your play area. This represents that you have discovered some disturbing and terrifying stories. And finally, when you move a research token to this space, you choose any of the tiles to gain the benefit of and then remove that tile from the game. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Lost Ruins of Arnak. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions about the game, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you to Check Games Edition for helping to sponsor this video, and if you like the videos that I make, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Until next time, take care, and thanks for watching. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.